When's the last time you've been to a pool party? Better yet, when's the last time you've been to a large body of water and jumped into that large body of water, hit, hit a body part, hit your stomach, hit your leg, hit your back, and felt a huge sting, a painful sensation from hitting the water? Or when's the last time you've been to a barbecue, a pool party barbecue, and said you were gonna do a belly flop? Did the belly flop, landed on the water, and absolutely felt the sting and burn of your life. Well, I'm gonna tell you exactly why you feel that pain sensation. Maybe not necessarily the reason why you feel the pain on your skin, but the reason why the water creates conditions where you actually are set up to hit uh, a firm surface instead of what you might think is something soft. So let's talk about the surface of the water and why it becomes so rigid that it can cause you pain when you land on it. So, this is the surface of the water here. So this is our surface of water. So we'll say, surface of water. Okay, so you might be thinking when, when you're at the surface of the water that it might be like snow, like fresh powdered snow. When you fall on fresh powder snow, you just fall into it. It has a whole bunch of give to it. You just fall, there's no pain at all. But when you fall onto water from some height, we'll say this, it'll say that this is you, you land onto the water, you hit the water, and it's like hitting, hitting a, something that's incompressible at first. And so there's a reason to that. And so when we look at what actually makes up the water, so we'll draw, underneath here this is underneath the surface of the water so let's think of water in terms of a molecular property or molecular basis so we have all our all our water molecules okay we have all our water molecules here so I'll start with two and so the re the reason why these water molecules create an environment where the surface of the water is so rigid is because of the properties of surface tension okay so we'll write that down surface tension okay and so what surface tension means is that there is essentially a tension, an elasticity here at the surface of the water. And that is caused by, once again, intermolecular forces. So, I don't know if you guys have watched my previous video on why water sticks together, but water sticks together because of intermolecular forces. There's also a surface tension on the top of water because of, once again, these intermolecular forces. So we know that intermolecular forces are gonna be a, a significant component of the H2O molecule and water in general. But it's the surface tension why you feel the pain you feel, or maybe not the pain specifically, but it's the reason why there's conditions that set up you to feel pain when you hit the water. So surface tension is what we're actually gonna talk about. Okay, so when we think about water molecules in a group, we think about their molecular, intermolecular forces. And so the intermolecular forces of water are different in, we'll say that this is, this is the substance the substance of the water, substance of the water, and this, at the top, the surface of the water. So there's a difference in the intermolecular properties and in how they actually are arranged within water at the surface compared to the substance of the water, the, the inner portions of the water. And so what happens is that we know that these water molecules have strong intermolecular forces. In particular, they have strong hydrogen bonding. 
Okay, so that what that means is essentially a hydrogen bond within the water molecule is a strong intermolecular force that takes a lot of energy to be broken. So we know that it's going to take a lot of energy to actually separate these H2O molecules. So essentially it makes them pretty strong, fairly strong uh, for liquids. And so what happens is that with these H2O molecules, um, there are intermolecular forces and those intermolecular forces act three dimensionally at the top inside the substance here. So you have intermolecular forces acting in all directions with this H2O molecule. And so they're essentially free to move in whatever direction they feel an attraction. So for example, if there was another H2O molecule right here, this H2O molecule is going to feel an attraction. This one here is going to feel an attraction to this one here, pulling it in this direction. Or vice versa, this is going to feel an attraction to this one, pulling it in that direction. If um, if there was another H2O molecule here, this hydrogen might feel an affinity to want to bind to this uh, oxygen, and this, this hydrogen might feel an affinity to want to bind to this um, oxygen here. And so essentially what you're seeing is that there is a 360 degree electric field that is capable of pulling the hydrogen, uh, the H2O molecules in any direction in the substance of the water. Okay, and so because of that, there's no real rigidity, there's no elasticity that can form per se in the substance of the water. But when we look at the surface, when we look at the actual surface of the water, what we find is that there's no intermolecular forces that can go in the y-axis or vertically. There are only intermolecular forces that, are, that can act on the H2O molecules going left, going right, and going down. Okay, so let's think about this. If I only have forces that can act on these H2O molecules going left, going right, and going down, what's going to happen is that I essentially am going to have attractive forces that are pulling apart and down on one another. And so that apart and down, if you just look at my hands, you can see that that apart and down creates a tension. And we all know that if you, if you pull tension into something, it becomes rigid. You can, you, can, you can think of a shoestring. A shoestring that is not pulled tight is soft, is, is malleable, you can kind of play with it. But as soon as you pull the ends of that shoestring and make that shoestring tight, that shoestring is, is pretty rigid. Uh, depending on what uh, the, so the softness of a substance, you can cut something with a shoestring if you pull it tight enough. And that's the same properties of the surface of the water here. So what happens is that you have the same H2O molecules, so we'll draw them again, you have the same H2O molecules here, but what happens is that they only have forces pulling this way, left and right, left and right, and down. And so when you're only able to pull left, right, and down, there becomes a tension, a rigidity that occurs at the surface of the water. And so that rigidity actually creates a hardness on the surface of the water. So when you go to jump into the water, so we'll, we'll erase this. When you go to jump into the water, or belly flop, which is the original topic, if you go to belly flop into this water, before you can get to the area where water is going to be quote unquote soft here, in the, in the mid substance of the water, you have to break through this very rigid top layer. And so breaking through that top layer is going to take some energy, which is then converted into the, the pain you feel on a more biomolecular level, but that's beyond what we're talking about here. Uh, 
And essentially what that energy is, is the force that it takes to break through the forces that are holding um, this surface in a taut position. And so to answer the question, the reason why a belly flop hurts so bad is because the surface of the water is actually rigid. And the surface of the water is rigid because there is surface tension due to intermolecular forces that only occur in a specific pattern, which is, which is um, horizontally and down, only at the top of the water. I hope you guys have learned something. If you have, like, comment, share, subscribe. More curiosity coming soon. See ya.